Hey everybody, thanks for tuning back in. This is the second installment of my do-it-yourself guide on making custom-bound comics here on the Macbeth Play Network. If you missed the last episode, we covered the various tools and materials that you'll need in order to create a custom-bound hardcover out of floppy comic books. And we also talked a little bit about prep. Uh, in this episode, we'll primarily be talking about the sewing process, which is by far the most labor-intensive part of creating the custom-bound hardcovers. So, let's get right into it. So, as I mentioned, with a square-bound book like this, uh, you've got to do things a little bit different. So, what I've done is I just took two small lengths of thread and sewed them through the holes that we poked and just tied a simple square knot here. Uh, we're doing this because we can't go into the side of the spine because that does not put the thread through each page like you get on a comic with a centerfold. <coughs> so in addition to putting the two loops in the holes, I've tied a six foot length of string or waxed thread to the first one and then we're going to take the needle slide under the other hoop and pull the thread all the way through and you'll want this to be really taut uh, it will loosen up while you're working but once we get into the second issue uh, we'll be able to tighten it up and in normal bookmaking practices, each of these issues would be called a signature. Uh, I don't know why they call them that, but that's just what they call a section of a book. So now that we've gone through this second hoop, we're going to bring our needle in through the hole of the bottom of the next issue. And you've got to make sure you get through every page, which is why we poked the holes previously. This is a particularly thick issue. Uh, I want to say it's 80 pages, so it's still difficult to get through there if your needle is bigger than your awl. So now you see we've brought the needle in through the center fold of the book, and pull the thread all the way through. Generally what you want to do once you get started is work these upside down. All right, you want to pull that nice and tight. You generally, when you're pulling on this thread to tighten it, you want to pull it along the spine of the book, not up like this or out like this, because that will rip the pages. So you want to pull it out this way, and you can pull it as hard as you want. You're not going to do anything. <clears throat> and you find your needle again. And you go out the next hole. Pull it all the way through. Again, you want to pull that tight before you go in the next hole. Pull it all the way through. All 
right now you can see we've got the small loop outside the book that's where your tape comes in so you want a length of tape that is four inches longer than the stack of books <clears throat> approximately uh, you can cut it to size afterwards so I generally try to cut these a little long but while well, trying not to make them too long because they get in the way while you're sewing so now I want to put a little bit of slack in that exterior loop and feed this tape through there a little more slack. I can tighten it back up once I get the book back open. So now this will be used to guide the stack of the books. So I can pull this taut and then make sure that the books are staying straight so that when it's all said and done it's a nice neat stack. And I can just tug on this thread again to tighten that in there and resume sewing and so then you come out the next hole And you always want to make sure you pull it all through uh, so that you don't end up with a big loop of thread in the middle of your book while you're reading it. And you go in the next hole. all the way through. I'll leave myself a little slack this time so I don't have to pull it out again. come out the top hole then once you've come out the top hole. You want to go back down into the sewing from the previous issue. Give that a nice pull. Make sure it's good and tight. Now you've got, you've gone back in that way, you've got your thread here, you want to come in under it, and then I push the needle out here, bring it out this way. This will make a knot that tightens right in the book. All right, and then you grab the next one, throw it on there face down, find your center fold, which uh, 
is the most difficult part of this whole process, is just finding the centerfold over and over and over again. And you go in the top hole, and you repeat that process until you've gone through all of the signatures. Out the next hole. And then here's where your tapes come in. So you make sure you got your books lined up properly. And you pull the tape over before you go back in that next hole. One use of the paper clips that I had mentioned before is that you can paper clip a section so that you can just pull on that paper clip and find the centerfold. Save you a little bit of time, but I did not do that because I didn't remove the staples this time. Sometimes it's difficult to get in your hole. So this is a, uh, a long painstaking process. All right, so um, that's it. You, you keep going like that until you run out of thread. So we are now to the point where I've run out of thread and we need to splice another piece on there. So I'm going to go ahead and pull another six feet of thread and give that a snip. And this is the knot that I can never remember how to tie. So I always keep my, my book handy. And our, uh, our video editor, Josh, he'll, uh, he'll help us out by putting an image of this knot up for a moment right now. All right. So you want to pull the thread like this so that you get a good loop on it there. And you always want to do your splicing at the ribbon. And you try to line, when you're done, line the knot up right in the middle of that ribbon. Uh, because you don't want to end up accidentally pulling the knot through the hole. So that will, that'll wreck everything for you. So, let's see. Take your new thread and you go through the loop. through a little bit and let's see you go let's try that again all right you bring your new thread through the loop pull it through a little bit you maintain the constitution of your loop there. You want to come back over the top of it. Back under again. Over both sides of it. Then under the loop. I know that there is no way that will make any sense on the video. So that's why the image was provided, so that hopefully that makes some sense for you. 
Hold that tight. Hold that tight. Right. Now, you want to get these excess strings out of here. But uh, before I do that, I always thread the needle again and go in through the next hole to make sure that the knot doesn't fall apart because once you cut that thread <clears throat> you can't attempt that knot again and you have to back up and go back to the previous stitch. So now with the new thread I'm going to go in the next hole And I do want to give you another look at the kettle stitch, which is what you use at the end of each signature. Come back out the hole at the bottom of the book. Make sure you don't have any slack in there. All right, so now we can get rid of this excess. And then I save those excess pieces to make the little loops like I made in the first issue. So now you want to bring the needle in through the stitch of the last issue. So you go up under it, pull it all the way through like that. That is not correct, and I don't know why. Okay, no, it was correct. I just pulled it too tight. So you go through that stitch, and then you make a little loop here, a taut loop. Grab your needle again, and then you go back in the section between the current issue and the last one. You go under the first one, over the next one. Pull it through. And there's your knot. All right, and one more time for good measure. I want to show you the kettle stitch again because um, the first one was untraditional or non-traditional and the second one didn't quite go as planned uh, because I pulled it too tight. So you've come out the top of this book and you just want to slide in under the last stitch, pull your thread through like that. And then you pull the thread up like that. And then go under the thread that's coming out of the top book. And then go over the thread as it comes out of the previous book. And pull it through. And then that gives you just a, a regular square knot right there. All right, guys, as you can see, I have finished sewing the last signature onto the book, except I haven't tied the last kettle stitch. I wanted to try one more time to film tying this knot. Uh, 
because it is the, the backbone of this whole process and my previous attempts did not go great, either because my hand was in the way or I pulled the thread too tight or something like that. So I just want to try one more time to show this knot as it's supposed to be done. So we've come out the last hole in the bottom of the last book. You bring the needle in under the thread coming out of the previous book. And you pull it all the way through. You gotta keep these ribbons out of the way. through, straighten your stack back out, and then you pull the thread up, pull it up over here, keep that taut, <clears throat> and then you go back under the thread coming out of the last book, and go over the thread that you pulled back up. Pull it all the way through and then before you tighten it all the way make sure you've got your books fairly straight so you can pull the knot not tight and then that is it you're done sewing thank goodness it's uh, definitely the most painstaking part of this process is the sewing uh, it does get a little bit faster with practice. Uh, I think I probably mentioned before it takes me a few minutes to do each issue, uh, but it used to take me like 10 minutes to do one because I was very uncomfortable with sewing and things like that. So uh, it's getting better. Anyway, now we need to add uh, a sheet of fabric across here. It'll cover this stitch to this stitch and you just glue it on uh, I'll get into that in a separate episode though